let's move to proteins. Proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Proteins are made up of amino acids, which are their building blocks or monomers. There are 20 different types of amino acids, which in different combinations make up different kinds of proteins, which is why proteins are so varied. These amino acids are held together by covalent bonds, and these covalent bonds are called peptide bonds. Each amino acid has a very specific structure. They are similar in many ways. Each amino acid will have an amino group, an acid group, a carbon, and a hydrogen. It also has something called an R group. The R group is what differentiates the 20 amino acids because each R group is different. So there are 20 different R groups. So here's your amino group, which is NH2, and the acid group, which is COOH, and which is why we call it an amino acid. As we've just mentioned, proteins are very diverse and they carry out a wide variety of functions. There are six different protein classes and each class carries out a different function. Structural proteins provide structure, as in the case of keratin, which provides structure to hair and nails. Receptor proteins act as gatekeepers on a cell membrane as in the case of channel proteins that allow only certain ions or molecules to enter the cell. The third type of protein are contractile proteins. Their function is to help a cell to contract and relax. This is found in the muscle tissue and muscle cells have actin which carries out that function. Transport proteins as in the case of hemoglobin transport gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood. Protective proteins protect us from infections, as in the case of antibodies. Antibodies are proteins and they are produced by white blood cells and they travel around in the blood looking for the infectious agents. Enzymes are proteins that speed up reactions. Lactase, as we just saw, is an enzyme that helps to break down lactose into monosaccharides. Lactase is found in the digestive tract. Based on how a protein is folded, it exists in four different forms, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. A primary structure, the amino acids are held together by peptide bonds which are basically covalent bonds. Usually when a protein is just made, it exists in the primary form. The next level is the secondary structure and it's a little bit more complex. Keratin in hair exists in this form. The pink circles that you see here are the and the dashed lines are the hydrogen bonds that hold this structure together. The next level is the tertiary structure and an example of this would be lactase. Lactase exists in this form, in the tertiary form, and its shape is extremely important for it to catch function. This tertiary structure is held together by interactions between the R groups that we mentioned earlier and hydrogen. So let's apply what we have just learned to a real life situation. We just learned that secondary structure of a protein is held together by bonds. And the example that we gave for a secondary structure was keratin. And keratin is the protein in hair. So let's apply this to Here's a person with natural and in this person, the keratin has many more hydrogen bonds than a person with natural. So there are many more hydrogen bonds that hold this keratin structure together.
That's what makes the hair curly. Here's a person with straight hair. This person, keratin here, has very few hydrogen bonds. There's much fewer. Now let's say I have curly hair and I want to straighten it. What would I do? I would use a straightening iron that basically applies heat to the hair. What the heat does is to break up these hydrogen bonds. So if you break these hydrogen bonds, your hair can now become straight temporarily until these hydrogen bonds reform again. So let's say I have straightened my hair and I feel good, I look good and I step outside. It's raining and I've forgotten my umbrella. So what's going to happen is that rainwater enhances hydrogen bonds. Rainwater is attracted to the dry hair and enhances the hydrogen bonds and as a result the hair starts A single cell contains thousands of enzymes and enzymes exist in the tertiary structure. As we remember the tertiary structure is held together by H bonds and R interactions. These are weak bonds and can be easily broken down by high temperature and changes in pH. Let's take the example of lactase. Lactase is an enzyme that speeds up the reaction of breaking down lactose into glucose and galactose. Lactase has a very specific shape and if this shape is lost it loses its function. This shape is maintained by again the hydrogen bonds and the R interactions. If the temperature, body temperature, increases beyond 40 degrees Celsius, then there is a possibility that these bonds will break. The greater the temperature beyond 40 degrees Celsius, the faster the breakdown of this shape. A low pH, such as acid, and high pH, such as base, can also disrupt the shape of the enzyme. And once the shape is lost, its function is lost as well. This is extremely important because the body maintains a specific range of temperature and pH because if this, this does not happen, all proteins will denature and death is the result. So far, we have looked at primary, secondary and tertiary structures. Now we look at the quaternary structure, which is basically two or more polypeptide chains connected to each other by weak bonds. So here we have four polypeptide chains and these are connected by H bonds and R interactions. A very good example of the quaternary Let's recap what we know about proteins. Proteins are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. The building blocks of amino acids. They are the monomers. Proteins carry out a variety of functions. So the six classes of proteins represent the functions that the proteins carry out. So we have receptors, which are found on membranes, enzymes such as lactase, protective proteins such as antibodies, contractile proteins found in the muscle, actin is an example, transport protein which is hemoglobin which transports oxygen and carbon dioxide, structural proteins such as keratin that is found in hair.